This video is brought to you by Brilliant. During my popular iPhone home screen videos, I've always shared that I am a one screen man. One screen to rule them all. Well, with the Z Fold 5, I had no choice but to accept my defeat and think of creating optimal ergonomic home screen setups on both the outside screen and the big boy when unfolded. So let me show you my principles of organization and tips and tricks that I've mustered to create a very productive and coherent Z Fold experience. I promise nothing complicated and things get more intricate for the enthusiasts out there towards the end of the video. Some of the apps are purely for aesthetic purposes and others unlock additional features like Good Luck, which is not available in all regions, but I'll show you how to install it nonetheless. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? So at a glance, I have disabled the synchronized screens where both the outside and inside screen share the same layout. It's a little bit more cumbersome, but I prefer to have the flexibility to optimize both spaces according to my needs. As time goes by, I tend to eliminate redundant items as much as possible and get rid of things that I can go by without. One thing I've disabled, for example, is rotation in landscape mode because it's unnecessary on the big screen. On the other hand, it looks comical on the narrow outside display, but don't worry, rotation still works when watching content or using flex mode. So first things first, I had to get rid of the default wallpaper and set up one of my own. I found my vintage symmetry pack to be the ideal combo for the fold, and I'll be sure to link it in the description below. I didn't want to try an animated version of the pack, so I created a video file which I'll be sure to include in the vintage pack as an update for new purchases. Samsung, however, no longer allows video wallpapers at home screens, only on lock screens. So for that, I found an app called Video to Wallpaper. The app is free and it allows you to place any video on your home screen. Take video wallpaper with a grain of salt as I'm sure it drains more battery than a fixed image, but it looks amazing. By the way, did you know that you can pinch the screen to open the wallpaper and widgets menu? I know you can tell I'm new to Android. Okay. We have a special package from my friends at Pitaka. As I mentioned in my last video, I really like how compact the Z Fold 5 is without a case. And if I were to put it in a case, it will be in this air case as it is as slim as half a dime, giving this phone near caseless look and feel. Unfortunately, this model doesn't feature the Mac Easy Tech that is in the rest of the Pitaka cases, but still, it is a great way to protect this device from scratches. And by the way, opening it with it is so much easier now. We also have a carbon fiber watch band for the Galaxy uh, Watch 6 Classic. So that'll be in a future video. Taking things outside in, I'll start with the outside display and specifically the lock screen. Here I have modified the clock to my liking and to match the widgets that I'll be installing. And this being Android, I had to change the bottom quick action buttons, specifically the left one, which I switched to the flash, light or torch. While at it, I'm leaving the little notification icons as is. And in the message section, I'm writing, why not? Because why not? Me being me, I couldn't stand the default settings of the quick panel shortcut, so I spent some time reorganizing things to my liking. The idea here was to keep the most important triggers at the very top when doing a single swipe, where less used ones remain hidden and revealed after the second swipe. Under quick panel layout, I also set the brightness slider to always be visible as I often find myself adjusting it. One thing that is disabled by default, which you can enable, is in settings, if you go to sound and vibration and then scroll to system actually sound quality and effects here you can enable dolby atmos both for watching videos and dolby atmos for gaming which doesn't necessarily change the actual sound and the punch of it but it changes how it disperses the sound to give you more of a immersive experience. Before I continue, let me tell you that I organize all the apps in both the app drawers, in folders, and in a way that makes sense to me as I hate things being scattered around. Aside from deleting bloatware, I place most of the stuff in respective folders. For example, all Samsung apps are inside a Samsung folder and so on. It was a bit of a tedious process since I had to repeat this for both screens, but once all my apps were in place, it made sense. With the app drawer organized, if I decide I can just grab all my social media apps as a folder and just drop them on the home screen. The reason I keep my social media folder on both home screens is to glance if there is a red bubble I should pay attention to. Something I talk more about in my recent iPhone home screen setup, which I'll link at the end of this video. 
Aside from this folder, the remaining apps on the smaller display are the ones that I use most. Swiping left, I have Google News, which I absolutely love, and swiping right, I have an extension of my screen, which holds a clock widget for aesthetics and my Microsoft to-do tasks. Even though the Z Fold provides face recognition, I prefer to stick with the more secure fingerprint sensor, and I use a password instead of a pin. If you're wondering how strong passwords work, I sincerely suggest Brilliant's new course called How Technology Works, where you explore how strong your password should be to protect your accounts from hackers. If you've ever wondered what a hash function is and how it works to improve security, you'll know after taking this lesson. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, data science, and computer science interactively. It has thousands of lessons from basics to advanced topics, from logic, data science, data analysis, AI, and neural networks to computer science, programming, and more, where new lessons are added every month. Whatever your skill level is, Brilliant customizes content to fit your needs and lets you solve at your own pace. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash this is E or click on the first link in the description below. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. An additional helper that lives in both displays is the Edge panel, which I absolutely adore. I have three panels that I use all the time. The first panel holds the apps that I might need at a glance, like one password, which when I need, I can just drop in a split screen and take advantage of. Same goes for the calculator or settings, for example. In that panel, I also have two of my most common split screen app groups, like two browser windows for research and a browser alongside Notion for the same purpose. The second panel is quick screenshot toolbox and the third is my clipboard, which I can so much appreciate. By this point, you might have noticed that I've changed the traditional navigation option and ditched the three Samsung buttons for swipe navigation. Now that I'm using Android and iPhone, it is much easier to unify them like this. Talking about navigation, I love the taskbar on the Z Fold. I rely on it a lot and for that reason, under settings, I have enabled the maximum number of recent apps for to be displayed. If you're not aware, the taskbar is exactly the same as your dock on the main screen. Initially, the phone app was there by default and I kept it for a while, but since I don't talk with the phone opened, I got rid of it and left apps that only make sense when using multitasking. Don't worry, the phone app lives on the outside screen if you're wondering. So let's talk about the big screen. It's a single screen after all, where of course, on the left I have the Google News panel. A big portion of the screen is taken up by again the Microsoft To-Do widget. Below it, I have the same weather widget and the clock widget that I had on the outside screen, which are pixel inspired and are created by leave a single developer. Both apps are really simple to use and offer various customization options like changing the colors and shapes of the widgets. Out of the box, the apps are free, but if you want to unlock customization like I did here, you have to pay or you know, a one-time fee of like a dollar or more, but it's very inexpensive and I think it's worth it. Plus, it supports a developer. Even though Android supports stacks, I don't use widget stacks that much because they're not as coherent looking as they are on iOS. Despite that, Underneath the weather widget, I have a YouTube music turntable widget, which is one way to glance what I'm listening to and to get into the app quicker, where on the dock I also keep the Apple Music, since I'm also using it alongside YouTube Music. Aside from the usual suspects, when it comes to apps, I have one important widget, which is my Google Drive. This widget allows me to instantly create PDF scans, which I use nonstop for receipts. Now let's talk about good luck and notifications. For those of you who are not aware, good luck is a Samsung toolkit which allows you to modify your Samsung device beyond what the traditional settings would allow. Good luck, however, is not available in all regions. In order for you to trick it and make it work, you'll have to rely on a VPN and some trickery. So the first thing that you need to do is to enable and turn on your VPN. In my case, I'm using NordVPN. Choose a country that is supported. Usually, I just select the United States. And that is step number one. Step number two is to disable your SIM card. For that, I need to go to settings and I can either eject the SIM card or I can just go to connections, SIM manager and just disable the SIM temporarily. Step number three is to go to apps and find the Galaxy Store. BCDFG galaxy store so you go inside then you go to storage and then you clear the data and the cache let's open the galaxy store and look for 
good luck. There it is. Download. Awesome. Keep in mind that if at some point you insert your SIM or turn it on or enable the VPN, good luck will still open, but it will look empty. It's not a big deal, however, because for the most part, once you're done with your mods, you'll rarely have a need to open it again. So the first thing I did with good luck was to enable DEX in 4K, something I share and talk about in my recent day in the life video with the Z Fold 5. To enable DEX in 4K from good luck, go to the second tab and look for a, an extension called Multistar. Now with me it's already installed. Once you set it up and go inside it, there's an option called I love DEX. Just go inside and select high resolutions for external display. Enable that, click OK, and 4K DEX is ready to go. This phone has so much power that running DEX wired and in 4K is at no expense at frame rate and performance. While in Multistar, one option you might want to enable if you'd like is under I love Galaxy Foldable and that is continue all apps on the front screen. I personally do that just for videos. While in Good Luck, another feature to download is Routines Plus, which will allow you to replace Bixby with Google Assistant when holding the power button. Once installed, you can open modes and routines and go to Routines. From there, under IF, choose button action, side and press and hold. This will tell routines that we want to enable a routine once we hold the power button. Next, under then, pick open assistant. That's it. Now, if Google Assistant app is not downloaded yet, do that first before creating this routine. And with that, holding the power button now triggers Google Assistant. If you enjoyed this video, then you should definitely check out my recent day in the life video with the Fold 5, which was a very special episode for me. Like and subscribe to the channel, as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is Z, over and out.